Hello everyone and welcome back. We got another game here and uh, this game is gonna be pretty interesting actually. This is not a live game so this is actually a recording I got sent to me here by Vindian. So Vinian, you've seen before playing on this channel, and he's uh, one of uh, one of the Hausa mains, and he uh, really likes to play Hausa, and he does it very well. So it's gonna be interesting. This recording he sent me is actually called the ten ten. So I guess we're gonna see a ten ten. So for you guys who don't know what a ten ten is, it's basically that you uh, age up with only ten villagers and ten population, so you actually don't build a house. So presumably he won't actually sell a cattle and he won't build a house or maybe he'll get a TP or something. It's gonna be really interesting. Now when Hausa was released the 1010 was really popular uh, because uh, it, it was used to make basically a super early rush where you just spam shipments. But then the shipment curve was really heavily nerfed so it wasn't really viable anymore and I haven't actually seen it since then, so it's going to be really interesting to see how Windian pulls this off and, and what it will use that extra time for. Because the thing is, when you do the 10 10, you get such an early age up that there's no way you're going to get that uh, House of Kingdom builder in. There's, yeah, it's just not going to happen. So for the 10 10, you actually already have all the villagers queue up. So there's going to be quite a lot of idle time, it seems. And I think it's really going to be hard to get away from that idle time. We see a Plague Doctor here from the Lakota player who has actually taken one of the treasure guardians and the Lakota sc uh, scout is of course way better than the Hausa one so yeah he just can't afford to take this trade as you can see the Lakota actually has f uh, an extra 100 uh, HP and also much better abilities um, and better speed <laughs> on top of that so for the first card we're actually gonna see s uh, four semi fatten cattle so that's interesting actually that's actually a pretty good card to be honest. Because you get like the four Senga cattle and then the one extra. So five Senga cattle. They're each worth a hundred uh, 100 gold. So it's essentially a 400 gold shipment. Now you do lose a lot not having that villager shipment. Like another way to do this would be to just build nine villagers and then sending the villager shipment to basically overpop you. And at that point he would actually been able to uh, age up right now. So it would actually be slightly faster, but at the same time, it is quite nice to have these cattle. Although we don't have Villager H2, so his, his economy is really gonna uh, struggle a lot. So we, we see Vinyan going for House Age up here. Now this is before the patch. Now if you haven't seen, there's a patch coming up and it's gonna heavily nerf the uh, House Raider Age up, uh, the, the Song Eye. So, but that won't really impact this gameplay right here. So he's chopping some wood here. He's have, he has four people on wood, four on food, two on gold. Meanwhile, we can see the his opponent here is actually building uh, this uh, uh, tribal marketplace. Which, if you scout this from Lakota, then it's basically a telltale sign that they're gonna go for the FF. So this can actually work really much in uh, in Vinyan's favor here because. That means that Vinian will probably get a lot of time to potentially idle this Aiko. So we can see Hausa is basically uh, basically has the same age up time as Lakota. That's really the power of Lakota, how fast they really are. Like Lakota sent the villagers and they already have 14 villagers versus Hausa's 10. So Lakota basically has a 40% stronger eco at this point and they have the same gather bonus here with the TP as well. So yeah. Meanwhile, we see Vindian here building a TP. I guess he traded in one of the cattles to build that TP. He has quite good wood value, actually. He could actually go ahead and get another TP right now. We'll see if he does that. So the H trap is coming in now. It's gonna be interesting to see what the first card is. It's gonna be the Raiders. So it's 1420 and he's sending the first Raider. So he's gonna get some really early Raiders. But because he went with the house H trap, he doesn't really have a whole lot of gold. It does seem like he was able to take a few tre good treasures and they actually mined some gold, I guess, as well. So he's gonna aim for that uh, to get some gold to train the Raiders. They're, they're of course 40 uh, coin at the time of making this video. So he's gonna get quite a sizable mass of the Raiders, although, and it's gonna be really early, but he's definitely gonna sacrifice uh, a lot of economy to do this. So it looks like he's gonna get the full batch 
But because he didn't H up with the, uh, with the dispatch ability, he's not gonna get that 15 pop. Instead, he's gonna get 10 and then he's gonna start training uh, the Fulanis. So let's see how this goes. So he's gonna get this Explorer, which is really nice actually. He's gonna really speed up his next, next shipment. And interestingly enough, the Lakota player is actually trying to get this trading post. So it's gonna be really nice getting that down. And we see some cavalry coming in here. Oof, this is a bit tough here. Now, the Axe Raiders are a lot better than uh, these Raiders, but because he has more Raiders, um, he's just gonna win this fight. And I think that was actually probably a pretty good trade for, for Binion, especially because he got that 100 XP again. Oh, that is amazing. Like, getting 200 XP is insane. I wonder if these are actually faster. I guess they are, actually. Um, so you get 7 speed on the Raiders, and yeah... 675 on the x rider so the so race are actually slightly faster so you can actually outrun uh, these x riders but here's the thing the uh, lakota player really went for uh, eco focus here going for that uh, fast uh, fast fortress it does seem like so yeah it's this is really nice for india and yeah he couldn't have picked a better uh, a better match to um, to do this strategy and so that was really nice but we do see some bow riders coming out okay so it does look like the Lakota uh, player after all is not gonna age and now he has these bow riders out and these would actually just demolish uh, these uh, cavalry units from house and yeah there just isn't too many it, there isn't enough Fulani to deal with those right now it does look like he missed a batch and He's gonna really struggle to actually make uh, a lot of units now. He's getting some uh, more Fulani here. I guess he sent the ship and they are com coming real clutch actually because they can counter these uh, bow riders quite nicely. But yeah, as you can see, the, the bow riders just have insane damage. Like 20 attack for a goon H2 is just absolutely ridiculous. And that's a 1.5 uh, reload time too. So they're, they're actually really fast reload as well. And then that's really sweet 2.25 multiplier, so they will just shred these raiders. Yeah, not great micro here by the Lakota player. He could definitely have backed up here and got a lot of these raiders. I think he could actually probably kill almost all the raiders if he really tried to. But And it's a really unfortunate spawn there as well, not putting the flag on the other side. So he's going to lose actually... Uh, an extra bow rider here. So right now it's looking really good for Vindian actually. He managed to take a good engagement and this is really what matters when you do this kind of rush strategies. He managed to take out this TP, he managed to take out the first axe riders. So that was kind of a wasted shipment and if you manage to take good trades like this it's, it's gonna go very well for you. But you have to kind of uh, you you have to hope for the fact that, uh, that they fall in in your favor because like if uh, if actually Lakota just went for the FF I think it would have been looking a lot differently. But we see some bowmen coming out now, so it's gonna be interesting to see how Vinian decides to micro this. Uh, preferably he wants the raiders to get to the bowmen. And he's losing a lot of his own bowmen. He wants to take out those villagers, but I think he committed a bit too much here on the villagers. But he did manage to kill a few vills. Uh, so he's probably actually quite close here on Eco. And we see that now the raiders are actually connecting with the with the bowmen. So and he also got all of those bow riders and he's just picking off more villagers. Oh, this is unfortunate. The uh, Lakota player just forgetting to put the villas into that uh, to that war camp. And we see the Lakota player doing a very defensive build here, just putting up two warrants. And I think he's just really tilted at this point. This wasn't what he, he wanted to do. It was kind of something he was forced to do. And whenever you can force a response like that from your opponent, it's always really good and it always falls in your favor. So he's actually sending in the crates of food. Very interesting decision here. Um, I think honestly great hunter would probably be a lot better because you'll get like 400 food and then that extra extra gatherate as well on top of that but he's gonna go for that it's gonna be quite interesting also the war chief upgrade wouldn't be too bad either like he has actually a lot of good options meanwhile we see vindian here in his base actually sending the berbers he hasn't really used a lot of influence so this is basically his first uh, influence use and he doesn't have any university, he has his TP on XP still, so he's not getting a lot of influence at all. So yeah, the eco is just really poor for, for house here. We got 19 villagers versus 20 villagers. So actually the eco is quite similar, and that is only because of that, those huge raids that he got in. So 
interestingly, uh, the score is just really good uh, right now for Ausana. It, it all comes down to trades. There's nothing uh, like the eco was definitely in uh, in the Lakota players' favor. Now we see Vinian adding some uh, more uh, of these Fulani archers. And they're gonna pair pretty well with these goons because these goons gonna be so good versus whatever melee cav uh, that Lakota has. Like these guys are just insane, incredible value. So now we see a composition of a uh, bowman uh, with some bow riders, and yeah, it's 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 a very similar composition here. Both doing like a like a bow goon type of composition and. Uh, I do th I do like the uh, the house units a lot more though in this matchup. Like the the Fulani are undeniably better than this uh, set and bowman. Um, the now the bow rider is a really good unit, but yeah, the camel rider is also a really really good goon. The big difference there, of course, is that the camel rider is in me melee. So using that melee, you can actually body block a lot better if something comes tries to take out your um, your your units with cavalry essentially. He's gonna grab some treasures here, get some extra resources. Now there's no rush for Vinian to push here, he knows he has the better score, so... Right now he's actually taking a bit chill, he's waiting for those accounts to come in, make some more raiders. Now I do think he wants to push though, because... The thing is, uh, the risk is here if... Uh, if the Lakota player actually decides to go for the h up and manage to squeeze that in, because then he's gonna have insane shipments actually H3 and H3, and it's really... Really scary uh, once you go up against those H3 shipments for uh, for Lakota. So we see a big mass coming out now. Even more raiders here. Even more Fulani. So there's quite a big mass here. We got 20 Fulani. And uh, that's going to be up against, what is this, like 11 Sitan Bowman or something. So uh, it's, it's going to be a pretty nice fight. And we see the Lakota player now taking a, a bit of a risk here going out on the map. Uh, also trying to get some raids in with the Plague Doctor. Just getting some vision. We'll see Vindia now uh, sending the gold. Now he does have the Lefidi Knights here. Which would be quite a nice option actually. Getting the Lefidi Knights in. And he also has quite a lot of resources, so it looks like he's gonna go for that H3. So I bet he will just wait for the chest of coin, and then he's gonna H up. He also has like incredible gold value. Like if he just sold two gold, then he wouldn't even need this 700 um, co coin. So maybe it actually would be better to just send this and just uh, actually pay for the H up. But yeah, we'll see. He also got the TP now, so he can do this stockpile. Uh, which would like equalize all the resources. He now Lakota is pushing in with some bow riders here, but he's gonna be uh, running in right into all of the Fulani archers here. So yeah, I, that's just not gonna work. Now, if Lakota would go around this side, he would actually potentially get a lot of villagers here, and also this side. But uh, he's a bit scared at the moment. He sees the score. He knows that. Uh, House is so far up in score, so yeah, he just, he doesn't want to commit at this moment. And I wonder if he's actually trying to age himself. No, he's not. He's just massing units, and I think he really needs to age. Like, the problem is he's running out of good shipments. He, he needs to age so he can start sending the Bakinas and the Rifle Riders and, and everything. But yeah, he's just stuck here in H2. He's too scared not to mass, and yeah, it's, it's going to cost him the game, I think. Meanwhile, we see not a lot happening here from Vindian. Now, if you're in a position like this and you're waiting for like at least may go ahead, walk around with your cavalry and take over the line of sight of these uh, TPs, it would actually help you quite a lot. And also, just keep uh, be on the lookout here on the sides because you know it's gonna run out of hunt soon. And if you're Vindian, you could probably actually see already on the map that he is running out of those hunts. Um, oh, that's unfortunate. Vindian just haven't spotted that. But yeah, it's, it's really important that you, you scout your opponent so you can see where the dead carcasses are. And then you will know uh, where they're hunting. But the HF is coming in. is almost in. He's training some javelins. He's training some Akans. Now the Akans will be really nice because they will be already H3. They will shadow tech essentially when he gets up in age. 
so they're always a safe bet. He's gonna H up with the Moroccans actually, so that's quite a greedy, it's a bit, bit of a greedy option. You get that uh, mosque where you can do, uh, so, so you can get like that XP trickle and also decrease the training time. Now, uh, if you're being pressured, you would of course go for the Akan. It's a bit of a safer option where you get the Akans. So he's gonna, so the fight's gonna break out now that the age, oh, and he w really wasn't ready for that fight actually. He's gonna lose some villagers, which is a bit unfortunate. But yeah, I think at this point, uh, Hausa's army is just bigger and stronger. Yeah, and there, there's just no way that, that Lakota wins this fight. It's just not gonna happen because they, the Berber cameras are already upgraded, the accounts are already upgraded. So yeah, the stats on these guys are just so much better than the Lakota army. As you can see, all the Fulan is still surviving and bit of weird micro here, but it's not gonna matter. We do see some reinforcing axe riders, which was actually a really nice uh, reinforcement here. And they're, they're actually gonna take out a lot of the Fulanis. Uh, ideally, Vinian would do some micro here and switch, switch around so the accounts can actually deal with those cavalry units. But yeah, it's just not gonna be enough. So uh, quite a decisive win here for Vinian. And yeah, that, that's that game. So what an interesting game. Um, is the 10-10 strong? Well, I think it can definitely work against some opponents. Like doing the 10-10 versus uh, Lakota if they go a bit greedy like this. Yeah, that could definitely work. Also doing doing it to do uh, like a really early rush. Like if you're up against maybe Ottoman or Dutch. Yeah, but I do think it's a huge sacrifice though. Like losing those villagers is... Uh, it's questionable and I also think that it's probably better to just go for the nine uh, build villagers until you have nine villagers then go ahead and send like the three villager card so you actually age up on 12 villagers and you actually age up even quicker I think that's just a lot better like I think one of the reasons that the 1010 isn't used a lot is because uh, when when you look at civs that do actually utilize the tent and like ports for instance they do it because they want to get the town center quicker but when you're Hausa you don't really have any good villager shipment in H2 like there, there's nothing really to rush for in H2 except of course uh, to send the five raiders but at the same time the five raiders are already so darn quickly if you just go for the raider dispatch age up with uh, the Songhai so interesting video I hope you guys got some ideas. Maybe you try this 10-10 for yourself and see how it goes. And I'll see you guys in the next video.